All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and clean all these mating surfaces, and we're gonna go ahead and put the new Vanos gasket. So usually you'll have the dowels stay onto the actual head, but our dowels came out onto the Vanos assembly, so we have, we're just gonna put the gasket on that side. Otherwise, usually you'll just put the gasket right here and have it go tucked in underneath and just make sure it lines up with all the bolt holes. But since that's not on here, we're just gonna do it on our Vanos, like I said. Uh, next thing you wanna do is we're gonna tilt these actual hubs as far clockwise as we can. You don't wanna move the camshafts, so if it is like feel really tight, just loosen these bolts a little bit. None of these bolts should be tight yet. They should only be hand tight like how we had them before. All right. So we've got our gasket installed. Yours might be actually on the head itself. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the actual Vandal's piston all the way in for both intake and exhaust side. All right, so now two things you wanna be sure of. Make sure both hubs are all the way clockwise as far as they go, all right? and make sure that the pistons are pushed all the way in. Because we're gonna insert um, these, both of these splines on the first available groove that it slides into. So you might have to turn these when you're doing that, but luckily we actually marked, we marked, our, we marked it at the beginning when everything was still in time. That way this step is a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to line it up. So we've got the exhaust side, that yellow spline needs to go with that spot right there. And then this yellow one for the intake needs to go with that one right there. You also wanna make sure you line up the oil pump disc. Make sure you have it on the right spot with the BS for base on systems. All right, so now we've got everything lined up somewhat. You're gonna have to twist uh, the actual hub itself just a little bit until it slides in all the way, the rest of the spline. All right, so all of my marks lined up. All of these bolts should still be loose and what we're gonna do is go ahead and push the Vanos the rest of the way onto the engine. You wanna make sure that the, the spline shafts were and the Vanos pistons were all the way inside the Vanos this way, both of them. Make sure they were really nice and in here. You don't want it to be sticking out at all, otherwise your timing is going to be off. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten all these mounting bolts. That way it pushes the Vanos assembly right onto the head as much as it needs to go. And then we'll tighten all of these. And before you insert the vanos all the way, make sure that those the exhaust hub tabs are going into the actual oil pump disc in the right spots. If you got the base on systems disc, it's gonna be the one that's right next to the say it's gonna be right next to the one that says BS and make sure the pump tab is going right into there. Now I've got a total of five bolts, the two 10 millimeter bolts, one goes on this end and the one goes on this corner. There is supposed to be that oil accumulator pipe that goes to this as well, but for right now we're just gonna put this in just so we can get everything tied up in there. Same with the bottom three, they're hex five millimeter. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the left and right bolts on each hub. We're just gonna tighten them down all the way, uh, slowly though, evenly, you know, do a couple turns on each side.
Do the same for this one as well. All right, once you have all four of those bolts tightened, two on each hub, now we're gonna loosen them about a quarter to half a turn. Now, with those two loosened, the hub should still be able to move a little bit. And when we go tighten all these Vanos bolts to get it back onto the head, it should allow those uh, hubs to just move just enough to get the splines the rest of the way. And then we can tighten all of the bolts. All right, so let's tighten all these Vanos bolts and just make sure you keep an eye out on the hubs and make sure that they are moving and not the entire camshaft. All right, so with the whole Vanos assembly nice and tight against the head, make sure all your marks are lining up if you did any marks. Otherwise, you should still be able to see part of the splines from the intake side. And the exhaust side, you probably can't really see much, but just make sure that the oil pump tabs are sitting properly. And now we can go ahead and start tightening all these bolts. So you do want to tighten all of them evenly. That way, uh, you know, you don't really mess anything up. You won't be able to get to the bottom two so in order to do the bottom two, after you've got the top four pretty tight, we'll actually rotate the whole crankshaft and everything from the crankshaft pulley, and then we should be able to tighten the other two as well. So you don't have to really tighten them uh, really crazy right now, because once we remove that crankshaft pin, we are going to do a full rotation and just, you know, be able to get access to each and every single bolt. But at least make sure you have a couple that are, you know, pretty tight. That way the hub does not move now. So once we rotate the actual entire crankshaft pulley, we should be able to do one full rotation and all the timing marks should match back up. The marks that I made are not real timing marks, so those probably won't match up for a couple of rotations, but once we have it on TDC again down there, we should be able to put the bridge back on it and make sure everything's still nice and tight. All right, so now I'm gonna go to remove this TDC pin. All right, so you can go ahead and pull the TDC pin out. Now we're going to go one full rotation. All right, so now we've done one full revolution. Put the TDC pin back in. Make sure it's at one. So you can see a little fork looking thing right next to the TDC pin, uh, or like a point almost, like an arrow. Make sure that arrow is saying, like it's pointing to the one on the actual crankshaft pulley. Now I'm just verifying that the dowel goes into each camshaft to show that we are properly timed. Awesome. And now you actually have access to the rest of these bolts. We can go ahead and tighten those as well. All right, so now we're gonna put the oil accumulator pipe back on. In order to do that, we do have to remove this corner 10 millimeter bolt again. And then you're also gonna need this small 10 millimeter bolt that goes on the bottom part of the bracket. Let's position this where it needs to go. Get this 10 back in here. Just hand thread it for now. You're just gonna have to feel for the other bolt at the bottom of the pipe, which is underneath the lower radiator hose. Now 
Now you can go ahead and tighten the bolt on the top as well, and you should be able to have enough play to get the washer underneath and the banjo bolt through. Now all that is left is we need to put the little Vanos adapter bridge right through here. We have two 10 millimeter bolts on this side. You want to be very careful and make sure you don't drop them. And before you tighten these all the way, we're going to go ahead and put this upper guide cover back on as well. All right, and that pretty much sums everything up. Now you just have to put the banjo bolt with the washer on the top, washer after the pipe, screw that in, hook up the rest of the vano solenoid with the ceiling plate, because all that stuff we've already taken care of. I've got videos on all of that. And then also the valve cover gasket. All you're gonna wanna do is just make sure you clean up all these mating surfaces, make sure nothing falls inside, clean everything up, and then put the new gasket on. And don't do what these people did with all this RTV. Uh, it just makes a huge mess for no reason. And make sure you don't forget to put all new spark plug tube seals. This will also be a good time to take care of your valve adjustment, which I will be making a DIY on that as well. So stay tuned for that. And make sure you put new washers for this fitting that goes to the valve cover. Don't forget to hook everything back up. Pretty much the opposite of removal, which I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but I've already spent way too much time filming this DIY and I kinda just gotta get the car done for the customer. Already running really behind, so let me just knock this out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informational. And once again, I, I can't stress this enough. Do not try this if you are not comfortable. I know it doesn't seem that difficult, anything that I do on video, but trust me, it can go wrong really fast. So just make sure you have, you know, make sure you have the proper tools uh, as far as the whole timing things go. Even if you're not gonna mess with the timing, just in case you never know, just buy the timing tool as well. Um, the whole Vano seals, the oil pump disc, all that stuff you can get at Base Sound Systems. I think even ECS tuning might have uh, a few of those things as well. I'll just list everything that I find. And if you need any of the torque specs or anything like that, the Base Sound Systems DIY has all of those torque specs. Um, their procedures for their whole kit are really, really uh, in depth and they pretty much go through everything. So I'll have that link down below as well. Watch these videos, go look at the DIY a couple of times, and you can even have the DIY like on a laptop while you're doing all the work. That way you don't forget anything. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go check out all my social media, Instagram at ShopLifeTV, the vlog channel Shop Life Vlogs, the camera woman right behind here. She's put up with this for the past almost, honestly, it's been close to 12, 13 hours. Uh, it may not seem like it, but it's been about 12, 13 hours. And, um, yeah, so make sure you go follow her as well at BMW Selena on Instagram. See you guys in the next video.